Okay, so let's start. There's uh, quite a lot of people here, more than I expected. Um, I'm just wondering if that's because you saw my name and thought it was the Olympic gold medalist, Katie Archibald, but sorry to disappoint. This is actually me. Um, I'm a project manager at the Cogworks and I've been there for three years and I am also one of the organisers of the UK Festival. So a little bit of context around what I'm going to talk about today. So my background is not rooted in development or programming or anything remotely digital. I studied languages at uni and something that I've always been interested in is the relationship between human behavior and linguistic change. So I'm going to talk about how that can also be relevant when it comes to technological change. So language is a true evolutionary process because it exhibits both variation and selection. Some languages change a lot, while others remain almost identical to their original. Um, but one thing that's certain is that it's a completely uncontrolled process and directly reflects the choice of the speakers. And the choice of the speakers, us, is something that I'm going to come back to quite a lot. So one example of linguistic change is the acquisition and adoption of new words into our, into our vocabulary. Um, there's many words which exist today that weren't around less than 10, 20 years ago, one of which being web page. Um, new words come up due to uh, like a, a, a new need to de describe something because we don't have anything to accurately describe a new concept or a product. Um, so I think it's amazing to see how much language has changed um, over a long period of time. Think about how different the English we speak today is compared with that of early modern English from the 16th century. Um, but not just that, within our, within our lifetime, we can, we can observe linguistic change. Um, and it's basically down to us. The longevity of a language and of words is if we use it a lot, words will stick around. If we don't, they'll probably, you know, peter off and not get used, one of which is groovy. But I think we can all agree that's not such a bad loss. So when I was thinking about what I should talk about, I kept coming back to the question of does technology change the way um, we behave or is it our behavior which changes technology? So technological change can be broken down into three stages, invention, innovation, and diffusion. So the first point is invention. Generally speaking, most new technologies and products arise um, through a need for something in a similar way to language to make our lives easier, to help us do something faster. Um, we've all heard of breakthrough technologies which promise to be tenfold superior than their predecessors, but it's not always the case. Sometimes we can be resistant to new technology, at least if we can't see the, the potential benefits kind of quite quickly. Um, we're often resistant, we, you know, it's new, we don't know what, we don't know about it, it takes a little bit of time to, to get used to it. Um, I read a, a great article about human-centered design when it comes to product development, and basically it said that it's very easy to create a product, but it's difficult to get people to use it. It's not just the end users of technology which can take a little bit of time to adapt to a changing environment. Um, sometimes it's even the inventors themselves, which leads on to the next stage in the process of technological change, innovation. So let's take it back 15 years to 2003. Gareth Gates sat comfortably at the top of the charts for two consecutive weeks with Spirit in the Sky. And BlackBerry were just about to revolutionize the mobile industry with their first fully integrated smartphone, which meant users could access web browsers, send emails, uh, instant messages straight from their phone. So can someone please tell Kelly Rowland that she doesn't need to use Excel to try and send an email? <laughs> um, and they sat quite comfortably at the top of the market, BlackBerry, for several years. That was until the almighty iPhone stepped onto the pitch and it kind of 
signify the end for, for BlackBerry. And the collapse of BlackBerry can ultimately be put down to a failure to respond to a change in user behavior, which was leaning towards a fully touchscreen interface. And they kind of, they weren't quick enough to, to, to latch onto this. Um, they didn't feel the pressure to keep up with a changing environment. Um, and so kind of, yeah, who's got a BlackBerry, anyone in here? Anyone got an iPhone? <laughs> So Apple kind of monopolized the, the smartphone industry with their revolutionary product of the fully touchscreen phone. And this monopoly leads on to the next point and most important point when it comes to technological change and, and not just the creation of technologies, but the success of them too. And that is diffusion. So diffusion of innovations is a theory created by Everett Rogers and it seeks to explain how, why, and at what rate new ideas and technology spreads. Um, Diffusion of technology relies on several factors. Um, obviously, good marketing helps, but um, I think the most important point is adoption, and that's us choosing to use a certain technology. Um, diffusion signifies a group phenomenon. So although the adoption is an individual process, uh, which involves several stages from first hearing about a product or a technology to actually using it, um, it, it's a group phenomenon and can be used to explain how new innovations spread. So ultimately, if people choose to not adopt new technologies, diffusion doesn't happen and the product or technology won't be a success. So circling back to my question of if it's technology which affects the way we behave or or if it's our choices, I think it's very important to recognize the influence that our behavior has not just on the development of new technology, but the success of them too. We have the power to shape the future of technology through our choices, our individual choices and our collective choices. Um, technological change is a social process and it's one that's constantly evolving. Think about how much Umbraco has grown in, in 10 years. Um, software being done is like a lawn being mowed. It's, it's never ending and it's constantly improving. And, and change is good, we shouldn't fear new technologies always um, maybe we shouldn't be so resistant because otherwise we'd all still be using like washboards to wash our clothes and Kelly Rowland, poor Kelly, she'd still be trying to send a text on Excel but most importantly we should be conscious of the power that our collective choices can have not just with regard to technology but in a, in a wider sense in all of our our life so thank you for listening to my first talk I hope there. Uh, and I'm not taking any questions. If you want to ask me something, see you at the bar. <laughs> Thank you.